Good morning, homesteaders. Today we're going to talk about passive solar. We have passive solar here on our homestead, and it has been so comfortable and so easy to use and really a wonderful part of our home design. So I really like to share it with people and encourage you to think about going passive solar. It's easy, it's inexpensive, and it works incredibly well. So here's basically what you need. If you'll go to the Abundaculture training manual, you'll see that we have a formula there for you. And I say it's easy as one, two, three. There are three things that you have to get into proper balance in order to have good passive solar. One, you have to have the right amount of windows. Now, you don't have to have extremely expensive windows. Just a good, basic, double-pane window is all that you need. You can spend a whole lot of money, and you're not going to get a whole lot more when it comes to how well the passive solar works. You need to have, number two, very good insulation. I like to see 18 inches in the ceiling at least, 12 to 18. I like to see at least 6 inches in the walls, 10 if you can do it. And it needs to be put in very carefully. If you do a very poor job of insulating and leave a bunch of holes, that cold is just passing right through wherever you have a little tiny hole in there. You do it very carefully and that's going to pay off. Number three, you need thermal mass. For a good passive solar system to work, you have to have the right amount of thermal mass. Otherwise, here's what will happen. If you just tried to put a bunch of windows on the south side, and then when the sun comes in, it gets very hot very quickly. But without thermal mass, there's no place for that heat to go. The minute that the sun goes down, then you have all these windows and you get very cold. So just having a bunch of windows with the sun pounding in is not a passive solar system. You'll be too hot whenever there's sun and you'll be too cold whenever there's not. So the thermal mass is a critical part of this whole system. Well, let's get more specific. The way we figure this out is we start with the number of square feet that we desire to heat. We're going to use a thousand square feet just to make it easy for all of our numbers that we're going to be throwing around here. So we're going to heat with passive solar a thousand square feet. What we need is to figure out how many windows we need. Well, I've figured this out very carefully and done all my homework, and you need 17 to 22 percent of the thousand square feet. So 17% would be about 170 square feet of glass. And we're going to put as much of that as we can on the south side. You don't need any windows on the north or the east or the west if you can avoid it in order for this system to work well. And if you want to ask questions about ventilation, we can talk about that at a different time. So we go from 17 to 22%. So if we want to maximize the amount of glass, we'd go up to 220 square feet. Now, how do you choose which? Well, in Colorado, we have a lot of really cold winter, but we also have wonderful solar. We get sunshine about 310 days out of the year. So I like to go a little higher. I actually put in more than 220 square feet when I did this design. And the reason I did that is because I knew my wife would like to open the windows in the winter. That's something that she always did. So I just made it so that it would get a little warmer in here. If you live in a place where it gets very warm and you're, you're dealing with pretty mild temperatures, go to the other end of the spectrum. About 17% will work very nicely for you if, you're, if you live in a place that's really moderate. The temperatures will get down below freezing, but not very often. I'm thinking of places like Oklahoma, the Ozarks, places like that. Then the smaller amount of glass will probably work very well for you. The next thing you need to figure out is, okay, I've got some decent windows. I've got all those squared away. Now, how much thermal mass do I need? And thermal mass will look like bricks, concrete, stone, those kind of things, or water. And water is a little different. Now, I don't use water because it does get very cold here, and it's possible that I could freeze that water. And that would be a real problem. So I tend to use the heavy stone, block, brick, and so forth. Well, here's a very simple formula for your thermal mass. Use two cubic feet 
of these materials for every square foot of glass. Okay, so let's say we go up to the higher end of that scale, 22%, 220 square feet. We need 440 cubic feet of concrete, brick, stone, or a combination of all those things. Now here's a little hint. You can always go with more. You don't want to go with less than the amount of mass that you need, but you can always go with more. The problem with going with more is it's typically expensive. Concrete is expensive. Brickwork is expensive. Stonework is expensive, but it's going to pay for itself. So if you go with a little bit more, it will moderate the temperature a little bit more effectively. What if you want to go with water? If you want to go with water, then what you need is approximately two to four gallons of water for every square foot of glass. So our 220 square feet of glass, we would need, again, 440 gallons of water, up to 880 gallons of water, and more would be better than less. Now, when you're using water, you have to put it in a tank where the air can completely circulate around that tank. In order for this to work, the air has to be able to move freely over our mass. Say we use the concrete floor. You can't put carpet over it because now the air can't move freely over that heated surface and take that heat out. The same with your water. It has to be in a container that the air can move around freely. So what's going to happen is the sun's going to shine all day. It's going to heat up your mass, water or stone or whatever you choose. And then when the sun goes down, it's going to give you back the heat very slowly. The idea is that it should heat up very slowly because of the amount of mass that you have. And then it'll be enough to be able to give it back to you very slowly for at least 8 to 12 hours. In order to keep the sun from pounding into your home during the summertime, when the sun is very high in the sky, when you have passive solar, you have eaves. So you create an eave that goes out, keeps the sun from pounding in in the summertime. In the wintertime, the sun's much lower in the sky, and so the sun will come right through those windows and just pound in there and heat all of that surface that you have in mass. And that way, you'll have a passive solar system that will be comfortable, draft-free, and very simple. That, in a nutshell, my friends, is passive solar. You can read all about it, download our free training manual, and yes, it's absolutely free. You can also go to our YouTube channel and you can take a tour of our home and see what it looks like. We've used it for over 20 years and we really love it. Thanks for being there. Hope that you can give us a call sometime. The number is on the screen. Give us a call if you have any questions. Keep your eyes on the sky because it's coming back real soon. Yes, we're all. Rains of sand When these things are touched By the master's hand Then our lives turn into mountains In a master plan Yes, our lives turn into mountains In a master plan One more thing. <laughs> what? What does it put your cat? Yeah, you can't sit on my lap because Daddy's doing a movie. Daddy's being a star. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty star like. Yeah. Yeah. What a good boy. <laughs> we have uh, our director with us today, Mr. Mouse, who, as always, is doing a fine job. 
yes, he's a very good boy. Yes, he is. He's a very good boy. But, Mr. Mouse, I really, I'm, I'm making a movie. Here, come here. <laughs> come here. Come here, buddy. Go on now. Here, get out. That's a boy. Go on. Do something else. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs>